Here goes Alugas, centering. Alugas blasted towards the box. Whittle shooting, score! Whittle byline, and it is in the back of the net. It is Alex Alugas. When Alex was young, she first started studying gymnastics. Then when she started to run, it was really clear that the combination of gymnastics and running and playing soccer, she could beat anyone. And then as she got uh, stronger and older, she really learned to control the ball better. And you can just tell she really loves soccer. I think when the ball's at my feet and I know that I'm faster than somebody, just taking a long touch and beating her it gives me so much confidence. And I think that's like the biggest uh, positive thing in the game that I have is my speed. I honestly think Alex is one of our best forwards and she has grown as a player and a person since freshman year. Crossed inside in the direction of Jennings, she's going to have an opportunity to shot is in for a goal. I didn't recruit Alex, Alex walked on her freshman year and nobody's worked harder than this girl. She's improved her game, I'd say in 16, 17 years honestly, she has improved as much as any player that I've ever had. Our freshman year, she maybe played a couple minutes, but, but she played. And she took every minute she played and tried to improve and would stay extra time practicing the things she had trouble with. Then our sophomore year came and finally towards the end she started starting and really being an important part of the game. And then last year, Sonia came in and took her position. Sonia Giroux! She didn't give up. She adapted and started playing on the wing and became like an amazing player. She actually took Sonia and taught her everything she knew to make Sonia a better player. And I thought that was remarkable from her. And not only that, she's actually partially blind in one eye. And then she has cataracts on the other eye. And there's lots of problems with her vision that she has had to overcome and play with and deal with. And that's actually part of what built her character. She was very young, and I remember the first few times we went in to see her, it was she saw floaties. So we set up a, an appointment with um, a uvi specialist down at, at the hospital near our, near our house, and he diagnoses her with um, pars planitis. Basically, I see cells, my, my cells moving around, and it also makes your vision blurry. It's very rare, um, like only a few people in the world have it, and there's no cure, so it's all just uh, testing and medications. Which turned out to be shots in her eye. Literally, a needle in your eye. She would get those every six months or so and it would clear up, the inflammation would go kind of go away, and then um, it would come back again. Probably the last two to three years, it became more clear that this was not going to go away. One practice, I just remember completely blacking out after a fitness test and like I couldn't see and I thought I was just blind so I just started crying and just started getting really emotional and I told my trainer I was like I can't see anything I'm blind like what's going on and she just told me like it's okay like you'll be fine like um, I bet it's temporary and I never told her about my eye disease so it, uh, I didn't really want to tell people about it until like this big moment happened I had my doctors tell me you should take a break. I had my parents telling me you should take a break. Even I remember Jim was just like, we'll sit you out of some fitness exercises so we can adjust to this disease. And I just remember saying, no, like, I'm part of the team. I'll let you know if I need something. And I, I, I'm so proud that I did that now because it, it defines me as a person. Sometimes she has to modify her, her fitness because that's something that really triggers it when she's really tired or, or under a lot of stress. Um, it brings more like pressure and she has to take all these drugs that, that they don't even know if it's gonna work. The medication that I take for the cells and the blurriness has a lot of side effects. So I take like liver pills, I take folic acid pills, I take uh, different like pills to maintain that my, my body's okay. And then I have a lot of blood tests to make sure that the pills aren't affecting it. The treatments have been up and down, you know. Um, she gets frustrated, she'll call me, then all of a sudden she'll get quiet. And, and I can tell she's gonna cry. So and I'm like, you know, what's going on? You know, and she'll like, I'm 
just so frustrated. So I know she gets frustrated with it and stuff, but it's like she just digs deep and we have um, lots of prayer warriors around her, praying for her, you know, daily. Um, and we are, we're just, we're hoping that they can manage it, that they can manage it so she's able to live a productive, easy life, you know, that's, that's, that's our prayer. She's one of these kids that you just want to mention her to everybody what she's accomplished in such a short period of time. She just never gives up. She's the type of player where she can have a lot of obstacles in her life, but she's so strong. And all these things that supposedly are supposed to bring down a person have built her up. Because of that, it's gonna take her so far. If you ever have an opportunity to play at a professional level, I think you should do it as soon as you possibly can. I would love to see Alex play in Europe and just learn. It's just a very different experience and it's one that I think uh, for years you'll be able to talk about. I did something that very few people in this world have ever done. I think this season really made me want to play pro. Even if, when we did lose, it, it made me realize that I still love the game. It's scary to think of her with this condition to go play soccer at the next level, you know, in a different country, no less. But um, if that's what she wants to do, um, the world is, is waiting for her.